Hello, my name is Amir Zashrani from Mutual Lab, University of Houston. Today I'm going to be presenting our work, Let Me Choose from Verbal Context to Font Selection. This is a joint work with my wonderful collaborators at Adobe Research. The motivation of this work came in part from previous font-related studies. These studies claim that an appropriate font conveys information about the character, context, emotion, and usage of the design. Knowing that motivated us to explore the association between font and input text with regular users in a crowdsourced setting. A piece of text can be displayed in different fonts and typefaces to express nonverbal information and add more dimensions to the text. The question we are trying to answer is, can we recommend fonts by only considering the input text? In this work, we model the associations between visual font attributes and textual content. And the overall goal of this research is to propose a font recommendation model by only considering the input text. Current font recommendation interfaces and commercial online services assist users in selecting fonts by using different techniques such as font similarity or font categorization, for example, display, script, or sans serif. These techniques do not consider the verbal context of the written text. However, by having a better understanding of the input text, we can provide users with a better font recommendation model. The proposed model can recommend congruent font with input text and save time by avoiding tedious exploration of long lists of fonts. First, a little background on font and typefaces. So several font-related studies support the idea of typefaces consistently perceived to have particular personas, emotions, or tones. A recent work, Fontlex 2018, was the first to find the association between fonts and words by utilizing font emotion and word emotion relationships. Instead of focusing on independent words, our proposed models suggest fonts by considering the broader context of the whole text. Our experiments also prove the relation between emotion and font. Font selection is a relatively subjective task. Most graphic designers agree that there is no strict or universally accepted rule for choosing fonts. Basically, different social and personal factors can be involved in typeface selection. However, according to previous works, there seems to be enough agreement among human opinions to build reasonably effective models of font properties. On the right side, I'm showing some examples from our collective data set in which instances are visualized through fonts with the highest agreements. As, a, as an example, money management with a business context is rendered with a normal, with a formal font. And enjoy the last bit of summer is showing with a modern display font. In order to achieve the research goal of this study, we propose and formulate the task of font recommendation for written text. We introduce a new data set containing a variety of examples annotated with 10 different representative fonts. We propose and compare different end-to-end -end models. These models recommend fonts by exploiting contextual and emotional representations of the input text. As we mentioned earlier, this task is subjective. Therefore, in order to capture inner subjectivity among all annotations, these models learn label distributions during the training phase. We collect the data from Adobe Spark in an m experiment. We ask nine annotators to label each piece of text. A set, uh, we selected a set of 10 display fonts that cover a wide range of training styles and ask annotators to select their top three fonts. We deliberately avoided fonts like Comic Sans or Impact, which are very recognizable and that people might have strong opinions about. Here I'm showing three examples from our data set with label distributions over 10 fonts. By comparing the label distributions of these examples, we can observe formal fonts like F0, F2, and F5, are often selected in the business context, like the example in the left. And scripts, script fonts like F4, F8, and F9 are preferred for more emotional context, like what we have in right. We explore transfer learning from pre-trained models in this task. We investigate four different deep learning-based architectures 
to learn font distributions of example in our data set. In particular, we compared the effectiveness of emotional embeddings in models like NRC and emoji models to contextual embedding, embeddings like the BERT model. The emoji model is based on the emoji implementation. It's essentially a pre-trained model on the task of emoji prediction. Here we don't predict emojis. We only use the odd representation of, the, of this model to predict font distributions. In all models, we use label distribution learning to handle ambiguity in the annotations for this task. In order to do that, we use scale averages as the loss function. Scale averages is a measure of how one probability distribution P is different from a second reference probability distribution Q. Our findings indicate that pre-trained models perform well for this task since we're dealing with short pieces of text. The bird model performs slightly better than the rest. The emoji model performs just as well, which suggests two things. The font recommendation task is highly related to emoji prediction. And the emoji model with fewer parameters can perform similarly to a complex solution like the BERT model. In this study, we associate font with real text and tackle the problem of font recommendation from the input text. We demonstrate, we demonstrate pre-trained models' ability to extract essential information to recommend proper font. Despite our previous work, we suggest that uh, the relationship between font and emotion we compare the effectiveness of emotional embeddings in our models to contextual embeddings like the BERT model. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, our implementation and the collected data set are publicly available. Thank you very much.